I came to this country in 1990 to teach for one semester or for one academic year. Having, not, having been in this country many times, uh, lucky enough to be in this country many times through the 80s, but I, I felt when I was offered the opportunity to come here for a year, I felt I should take it because, you know, visiting with a return ticket in your pocket, um, ah, you, you get to have a love affair with America or whichever part of America you're in, Los Angeles or New York usually in my case, but you don't really understand the country. And I thought, what better way of getting to understand America than spending a year trying to teach. I say trying to teach because I didn't really have much teaching experience, but trying to teach or at least engage with young Americans. What a terrific opportunity to go a little bit further than just you know the two or three week visit. Um, and America gave me a lot of things. It, first of all, it gave me a certain anonymity, um, which I didn't have in Britain. In Britain, I was very much the, um, you know, if a black guy threw a bottle at a policeman, the BBC would call me up for a quote. You know, did I, what was what was my take on this? Well, you know, you know, back off, guys. I'm trying to write a book. You know, my take on this is I have no opinion. You know, it wasn't me. <laughs> that was my take on it. Um, but you become, by virtue of, you know, being university educated published, therefore visible, black person, automatically this spokesperson, mm -hmm. in, a, in a kind of crudely reductive way. Um, and of course, to start with, yeah, it's exciting. Somebody wants your opinion on this and you blab, blab, blab away. And then you realize, actually, you're not working. You're not doing any writing. You're turning into something else. So I enjoyed the anonymity. The United States certainly gave me a respite from from that. It gave me the opportunity to participate in a society where I didn't feel um, that there was a, a ceiling on my ability to achieve anything, which I think a lot of British people, it's not just to do with race, it's also to do with class. And I, you know, my empathies are with the working class or the lower middle class. But if you grow up in British society of the wrong class, then you know, you're aware we have this thing called the royal family, who they are the head of state, not the prime minister. So there's always a ceiling in British society for a lot of people. So I, I think I felt a bit of that too. Um, but I also felt that I was also in a society that doesn't hyphenate identity, Britain. America does. America allows you to be more than one thing. It, al it accommodates the Irish American, the Swedish American, the Jewish American. You can yoke together two identities that, um, you know, in, in, in rather more um, concrete essentialist Europe where identity isn't as easily hyphenated um, to be more than one thing, to have plural cultural or racial or ethnic or religious feeds puts you in a difficult situation in Europe. America again in a sense liberated me from that. But all of these things were swirling around and were not articulated until September the 11th when I really had to sit down and think about this question of belonging.